A lot of people say, hey, you know what? I understand how to charge an electric car because there's charge stations or I can get something set up at my house. But how is it that you do it um, at a marina? How do you charge an electric boat? Okay, so for the recreational boating scene in North America, many marinas are gonna offer what is called shore power or dockside power. And what that is, is the provisioning of AC power to your vessel at berth. What that does is eliminate the need for you to run your engine or your genset or drain down your batteries perhaps if they're hooked up to an inverter and you're running any type of electrical equipment that requires AC power. Now for eTolly we have the two chargers that are charging up the power banks, each battery bank for each motor and those chargers require AC input and that gets converted to uh, DC and that charges up the batteries. So um, the availability of shore power comes in quite handy. Now in North America, you generally get two flavors at a recreational marina. Uh, I would say it's 120 and 240 volts, but for the most part, what you're gonna see is the offering of 120 with a 15 or 30 amp uh, maximum current draw. Now it gives you anywhere from 1800 watts availability to 3600 watts availability. So what you have to do is size your chargers up to match what uh, you have at the dock. So let's go take a look at uh, what the outlets look like and let's talk a little bit more about um, how we plug it in and uh, get power into those battery banks. Okay, at the dock side here, we have your AC pedestal. This here is your shore power outlet. On the top is a label that says 30A, meaning 30 amps, 120 volts, 30 amps. So you have available uh, 3,600 watts maximum. Pop this open and you're going to notice that the receptacle looks rather unique. If you've had an RV or a boat before, this is going to look familiar. But um, the blades from the male end can only go in one way. Once you get them into place, twist it, give it a pull. There you go. Now it's locked into place, nice and secure, and it's time to start charging your boat. Okay, so at the boat here, we have the female end of the plug. And as you can see, the connector looks a little bit different than what you might have noticed for the male end. Now, that's because this is an aftermarket purchase. It's called a smart plug. Uh, we just feel it's a better uh, and safer setup. So when we did the boat conversion seven years ago, we made sure that we had one of these, at least on the boat side. Um, so it comes with its own special type of connector and its own uh, receptacle. And you may notice in here, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but it's got very nice and wide blades for a, uh, a better connection, which is always good to have when you're uh, drawing a lot of power. So what you do, snap everything into place. And if you close the lid, you'll see here, there's a little groove here and that um, sits on top of this uh, tab here. And that also adds for the security of the connection. So there you go, that's it. Um, that's how you get shore power into your boat. So now we've got access to 120 volts at 30 amps. Okay, so from the dock, we have the shore power cable coming into the boat, into the smart plug receptacle. From the smart plug receptacle, we are wired into this master switch here that has a reverse polarity indicator on it. It's very important to have one of these on your boat because Often at these marinas, they have the handyman doing the wiring and they get the hot and neutral reversed and that's actually a safety concern and it can also wreak havoc on your uh, sensitive electronic equipment. So let's just turn this on and see what happens. All right, we're full green. That means this dock is wired correctly and we can now apply power to the main AC panel here. So from here, we just flip the main switch on and I don't know if you saw that, but the AC voltmeter jumped up, looking like 120 there, so that's all good. Now, I don't have any of these breakers hooked up. I don't have a microwave, and I don't have like a hot water heater or air conditioning. But if you did, you could hook it all up here as well. I got this panel off of Flounder Pounder many moons ago. It's kind of like new old stock, and it came pre-wired. So it was a really good buy, and it saved me a lot of, uh, a lot of work, to be honest. All right, so to charge the batteries, um, I do have these two breakers hooked up to GFCI outlets in the bilge. And if I want to charge those batteries that are, the chargers are already plugged into the outlets. So if I want to charge them, I basically just flip these on and you'll see the ammeter climb. Should climb. There we go. So now we're at the beginning of the charge cycle. 
both those chargers are drawing some power and that's it let's go into the bilge and i'll show you how it's wired down there all right so from the ac panel uh, each breaker switch is wired into its corresponding outlet here is the port side outlet here is the starboard side outlet um, they are gfci outlets that i picked up from a very well-known uh, hardware store along with the outdoor enclosures You'll notice on this one I've got one plug for the uh, port side charger and here I have the starboard side charger and also the house bank charger. Uh, the reason why I can get away with that is because if everything was in perfect synchronicity where they're drawing the maximum amount of power, I would still only reach 95% of what is available coming in from the dock. So that's pretty much it. That's how you get all the uh, power from the dock into the boat. Uh, and to the chargers. So now it's time to start talking about the chargers. All right, so from the outlet, you go to the chargers. This is one of two 72 volt chargers by Delta Q, a thousand watts for output. And from the charger, you pretty much just go to the battery pack. And you wanna make sure that, I've said this before, that your terminals are nice and clean. Um, you've got uh, good cabling, nice thick cables here. You want to reduce, reduce any of the resistance because as these batteries get older, they're going to get more internal resistance and they're going to take longer to charge and they're going to um, off gas a little bit more and you'll have to water them a little bit more often. These batteries here are seven years old, so they're definitely at the end of their life um, due for a new pack, but these ones owe me nothing. They've served me well over the years. All right, so that was a bit of a long-winded answer to the question of how do you charge an electric boat at a marina? But I did want to give you a bit of a high-level walkthrough of what was involved in setting up eTolly. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty simple. There are some devils in the details, but all in all, it's a pretty simple setup. Now, I also have to tell you that working with electricity is extremely dangerous, so please hire a professional before you try this yourself. That said, once you're set up, it's easy peasy. You just got to find a marina with shore power, and there's plenty of them out there. And once you dock your boat, you just plug it in and walk away. No different than plugging in a golf cart, an electric car, or an electric bike. It's just a different medium. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful to somebody out there, and I wish you all a great rest of your week. Cheers.